Hello. Uh, we've just gotten through computing our active and our passive pressures, and what we're going to get into now is the force balance below the bottom of the excavation. That's where things get a little bit complicated. Above our point of our, our excavation here, uh, from depth H and above on our retained side, we know we have all passive, all active pressure. Excuse me. And below the point of the excavation, here in this depth D, from, from the bottom of the excavation all the way to the tip of the pile where we've driven it, uh, we're going to have a balance between active and passive pressure. And so we need to compute the force balance here and understand uh, where, the, where these forces are going to be applied. So what we'll do here is we'll go step by step through uh, the force analysis and then we'll do, it, uh, we'll do the actual force analysis for our example problem here in a moment. Uh, as we move th forward. Okay? One thing I'm showing you here in this diagram is a rotation. Okay? What's happening is we have a point of rotation that is that black dot that you see there. That point of rotation means that we are going to allow that, so that sheet pile wall to move slightly counterclockwise, allowing the soil and the, on the retained side above that point of the excavation to relax very slightly. By relaxing, we engage that active pressure, which is going to be very, uh, very small in comparison to our passive and at-rest cases that we've already talked about previously. So our next step in our analysis is to compute what we're going to call P sub E. That's the difference between the passive pressure on the excavated side and the active pressure on the retained side between B, our plane B, and the point of, the rota point of rotation. Now let me draw that out for you here because I think it can be a little bit, um, a little bit complicated. Um, I like to draw these out conceptually because I think it helps me. Um, so let's, sit, let's, let's over exaggerate what's happening here. If you remember we've got our top of excavation, bottom of excavation, and we're dealing with this point B. And we have this point J down here. We know in this zone that we have some balance between active and passive pressure. And here's why. Let's say we had our, excav our, so our uh, sheet pile wall or whatever our cantilever wall is. And this is below the point at the bottom of the excavation. So this is somewhere in that depth D. If we allowed this, if we required this to not move, we would be at the at rest condition. That would be like a reinforced wall. But we are allowing it to translate very slightly about what we call a point of rotation. Now at this point, what we allow is motion to the left here and motion to the right where we have a little bit of rotation. Now of course it's not going to be this extreme, but I'm drawing this for uh, just for comprehension purposes only. Okay. Now we allow this this pile to move in this in this zone uh, at the bottom. We allow it to move slightly to the right. Okay, into the excavated side, uh, into the retained side. On on the above the point of rotation, above this point, we're allowing the the soil to move in the and engage the active case on the retained side. What we know, if this right here is, the is our plane B, and this is our plane J, we know that from the point of rotation here, all right, up to B, we are going to have active pressure probably should write that as P active and not P A active. <laughs> So this is P active on the retained side. And that's going to occur all the way up to the top of the pile. But what we're also having here is we have that pile moving against the soil, actually trying to move uh, laterally against that soil. And so we know that we're uh, engaging P passive on this side. Below the point of the excavation, this point of rotation here acts as a switch. Okay? Instead, on this side, we're moving against the soil. We're translating against the soil. And so that will then become P passive. And this is going to be active. All right? Now, the thing to notice here is that P active above uh, the point of rotation is not going to equal P active below. Okay? We're going to talk about how that force balance works. But what, what I'm trying to show you here is on the 
if we call this the, the retained side and this the excavated side, on the retained side between the point of rotation and B, we're going to have active pressure on the, on the retained side. On the excavated side, we're going to have passive pressure, which is resisting that motion. Below the point of rotation all the way down to plane J, okay, we're going to have active pressure on the excavated side and passive pressure on the retained side. This point of rotation acts as a switch. Now that's going to be very important as we go through this analysis. Okay? So let's pop this up. This is where we left off with our last lesson. And if we leave off here, we just said we need to compute PE, which is the difference in the passive pressure on the excavated side and active pressure on the retained side between B and the point of rotation. So we just talked about that. Okay? This value represents the two forces we expect to mobilize, one resisting the other. So the passive pressure on the, retain, on the excavated side is going to try to resist the active pressure on the retained side. Okay, so there's your passive pressure and your active pressure. All right, to compute that, let's go to our, uh, let's go here to our notes instead of just giving you the equation. I think this will make a little bit more sense. So if PE is the force balance here in this region, all right, if that's P sub E, what we know is the passive pressure okay, at any depth there on the excavated side is going to be gamma times whatever that depth may be. Call that D because we're going to go, do this all the way down our depth. Okay, Gamma D times Kp minus, and we're going to assume the passive pressure is going to be greater because of the, the great magnitude of our passive pressure, times gamma d plus h, because that is all of the vertical height above that point. Remember, we do have this retained side to deal with. Okay, And we're dealing with active pressure on this side. So our, our expression, P sub e, is going to be related to this right here. And we can actually compute that for our problem here. It's going to be 120 times D times 3.0, because we have our passive pressure of 3, minus 120 times D plus H, which, uh, let me erase that because we know H, D plus 10.5 times our Ka, which is going to be 0 0.33. If I simplify that all out, and you can do that with your calculators, we end up with 320D okay, minus 416. Right. Now, let's go back to our PowerPoint here really quickly. We've done P sub E, which is in this region here, point of rotation up to plane B. Now, let's talk about what we're going to call P sub J. Now, when I, before we get to that, though, when I draw this out, because we're doing this in terms of D, we are actually going to draw our line there. Now, we're not going to expect, we're going to continue it down to the bottom of the excavation. This is going to give us our line there. But we're not actually going to have this P sub E after we get to the bottom of the point of rotation. And that's going to actually be quite important as we move forward. Okay, now let's talk about P sub J. That's what's, what's going to be occurring below the point of rotation all the way down to plane J, which is the tip of the pile. There, like we mentioned earlier, we have active pressure on the excavated side and passive pressure on the retained side, which is opposite to what we had above the point of rotation. Point of rotation is our switch. Okay, so in order to compute that, let's go over here to our notes and talk this one through too because I think it's important to be able to reason our way through. Now, we're dealing with, with below point to point J, okay? So P sub J is going to be the active pressure on the, uh, on the excavated side versus the, retained, versus the passive pressure on the retained side. So again, let's say we have our passive pressure on the retained side, which is going to be gamma D plus H, times Kp. Now the reason that we have this, excuse the dog barking in the background, my apologies, because we have 
uh, the D and H, we have all of that soil above that. So that is going to be that whole region here. Okay? We're going to have our D plus H. All right? Gammas, multiply that by gamma, that's our weight above that point, and then multiply that by KP, which is going to translate that into a passive lateral earth pressure. We're going to subtract from that because the active pressure is going to be acting against our passive pressure there. We're going to have our gamma D times Ka. And the reason we have gamma D Ka and no H there is that we don't have that soil weight above there. We've excavated above that point because we've excavated to depth H. If we do that out in our problem, we have 120 times D plus 10.5. Let me make sure I got make sure this is clear for you. Uh, D plus 10.5 times our KP, which is going to be 3.0. Okay, minus our gamma of 120 times our depth D, which we still don't know, times 0 0.33. And what we end up with for an expression for P, or an actual value for PJ is going to be 320D plus 3780 when we've uh, simplified. Again, this is going to be in pounds per square foot as is this. Okay? So these are our force balances. This is going to be absolutely critical as we move forward in our problem. And understanding one thing as we move forward is that what we end up having here is a line, all right? And this line that I'll show you here uh, is really the balance between the passive and the active pressure. It's the rate at which the active pressure or the passive pressure overcomes active pressure. Okay? And we're going to need that that understanding later on in our problem. Okay? Because what happens there is we need to understand that change in rate in order to compute where our locations for our forces are. Okay? What you've ended up with at this point, which is quite nice, is an actual force distribution. So the kind of these phantom values that we were computing earlier, where we knew we didn't have we weren't engaging our passive pressure, for example, in that region H, uh, we we used all of those numbers in order to come up with this this soil profile that you see here. Okay? Now we know that this value uh, at the first apex of our triangle is going to be P sub A. We know that we're going to have PE overcoming this. That's going to be that line there, the second line down and to the point of rotation. And then from the point of rotation down to plane J, we're going to be dealing with that force balance P sub J. So we actually have quite a lot of good information now. And the next step is going to be force balances. So stay tuned. I uh, hope you enjoyed this and learned something.